binomial theorem. Okay, this topic is not a new topic to you because I had already exposed you to this topic when I was doing limits concept with you. Remember, we had one standard algebraic limit x to the power n minus a to the power n by x minus a extending to a as n a to the power n minus one. If you remember that limit, that was actually derived by the use of binomial theorem. Okay, and you'll find the use of binomial theorem in you know subsequent parts of your learning in physics, chemistry, and maths. Okay, so let's talk about it. But before that, let me give you an overview of the chapter. Okay, what are there in these chapter in this chapter? So first, we are going to talk about binomial theorem applied to whole number index. Okay, now what's a binomial expression? Most of you are already aware of it. So binomial expression is where you have an algebraic expression containing two dissimilar terms raised to an index or an exponent. Okay, so what's the binomial term? binomial term is nothing but it's an algebraic expression okay so this is an algebraic expression having two dissimilar terms dissimilar terms raised to some exponent this is called the exponent or index exponent or it is also called as index okay so we are going to learn in this chapter you know how to deal with such kind of an expression of course binomial theorem is one aspect of Uh, this there are many more things into the into the uh, into the chapter so binomial expression is this but but let me tell you guys and girls many people have raised this question to me that but binomial theorem can be applied even if these two terms are similar right or even if these two terms are non algebraic yes absolutely right this is a binomial expression that doesn't mean binomial theorem is only going to work on a binomial expression it can work on a non binomial expression also that means even if there's this expression has got two similar terms or even if these terms are non algebraic in nature let's say they are logarithmic or exponential you can still use binomial theorem on that okay so don't get confused between where binomial theorem can be used and what is called a binomial expression okay anyways so our first part of the chapter maybe we will not be able to complete the first part only in today's session okay so this is going to be almost your 50% of the topic so binomial theorem where your index is a whole number this is what we are going to discuss in the first part of the topic in the second part of the topic we are going to talk about binomial coefficient series binomial coefficient series okay this is what we are going to discuss this is very important and uh, especially important from your j main and j advanced point of view because many questions have been framed i have also seen many questions coming in ct also based on this concept binomial coefficient series the third thing that we are going to talk about is binomial theorem for any index binomial theorem for such index indices which are non whole numbers means it could be a fraction it could be a negative integer okay so we'll be talking about that as well and we'll also be talking lastly about the multinomial theorem so this would be our four major sub topics that we are going to discuss under binomial theorem okay now enjoy this chapter most of these uh, concepts are already explained to you directly or indirectly in our previous discussions and this this is going to be our last topic uh two classes will be required so i think uh, the class that we will have on ayo 26 january happens to be our next class are you ready for a class on 26 january how many of you want class on 26 january ha huh? 26 january will you attend a class of mine if i keep it of course morning time is free because let's say if you are supposed to participate in some school event and all you can do it okay we'll see when when we <laughs> oh yeah many people are not at school uh, at home only school and all is has been closed off okay let's see we'll see 25th we will decide what to do okay normally tushar sir is going to poke me why are you keeping a class on a national holiday <laughs> this is the last class of this year why this year ha huh? this year has already started by the way you are talking of this 
academic year <laughs> no 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 the one more class is required and we'll have revision after that so till your exam is over we will not call it as the last class acha one more thing i forgot about it uh, please share with me your uh, final semester schedule when is it starting when is it ending okay so that we can you know stop at least 5 6 days before the exam if you have got it please somebody share it to me share it with uh, us on the group so that all the teachers can have a look at it okay so let us try to start let us start with binomial theorem for the first part binomial theorem for whole number index binomial theorem for or whole number index now i'm going to derive this theorem merely by observation okay so whatever we have done in our junior classes based on that i am going to derive the theorem which will help us to expand a binomial expression okay so we are not talking about how to expand such kind of an expression where n is a whole number now let's start with our very very simplistic case where n is a zero okay so we all know that this is going to be a one isn't it so that one i am going to write it as 1 x to the power 0 a to the power 0 okay just to make you realize some pattern so i am writing it in a very strange way most of you would be thinking sir one you are writing it like this why right because i want you to you know realize some pattern which you will eventually realize when i when i write the expansions of few more expressions like this let's say i want to write this right this is x plus a only but that x plus a let me write it like this right x plus a whole square we all know it's x square plus 2ax or 2xa plus a square but i will write it in a fancy way okay see guys pattern pattern is what you should be paying attention to what is the pattern that you are seeing over here that's what is important a x plus a whole cube is x cube x cube i'm writing it like this 3x square a 3x a square and finally a cube which i am going to write it like this okay so i can continue on and on but what i want you to observe here is with respect to these expressions what is the pattern that you are seeing the ones which i have underlined what pattern do you observe so one pattern that everybody would have seen is that each of these expressions have both x and a terms right so whatever terms i have written it has got both x and a terms okay and this exponent is first completely taken by x so x raises itself to that exponent a starts with 0 and slowly slowly x starts losing that exponent right and a starts gaining so here if you see this i mean zero there is nothing to see but here if you see in the second expression one is being taken by this guy completely a is having zero and slowly x becomes i mean one less it loses down one of the exponent and a gains one exponent okay and at every time you realize that the sum of the powers of x and a matches with this number isn't it again let's see the second one also so the exponent is 2 here so 2 is completely taken by a first a is 0 then 1 for x 1 for a then 0 for x 2 for a and at every stage you will see that the sum is going to be 2 it's not going to be any other number okay same goes with here also 3 also 3 0 2 1 1 2 0 3 right so it basically gives you a feeling as if you are trying to distribute the exponent between two people let's say there are three chocolates okay and x and a are takers for those three chocolates let's say you want to distribute three chocolates okay and there are two students x and a so how many ways can you distribute it three to this guy zero to this two to this guy one to this one to this guy two to this and i mean three chocolates mean three identical chocolates okay right so basically these become the way you are distributing these chocolates to x and a these basically become the way you are distributing the power n over x and a over here are you getting my point so thanks to this particular observation that at least now if i have to write a further more expansion let's say x plus a to the power 4 at least i can say there will be something x to the power 4 a to the power 
something x to the power 3 a to the power 1 something x to the power 2 a to the power 2 something x to the power 1 a to the power 3 and something x to the power 0 a to the power 4 correct if i have to further write down x plus a to the power 5 i can say something i mean what is that something and all i'll fill that bracket in some time don't worry about it so i'm just trying to come from the observations that we are we are you know getting from the previous expansions by the way use uh, uts are over can you share your maths marks with me if at all you don't mind i think most of you were busy last week with your uts right if i'm not mistaken hsr kormangla uts were on very good uh, Pratej, it is out of how much? Excellent. That's good marks. How about others? I, achha, NPS HSR hasn't got yet. What about Kormangla? Tell, tell. Don't hide. <laughs> Shardili. Vaishnav. Vaishnav is not there. Karthik Sanoj. Are, message me privately. I will not reveal your marks. Are, Setu is also there. No, Setu. Yeah, Setu. Setu is very quiet nowadays. Ayyo, Rama, Krishna. But still, how much you got? Tell, tell, yaar. Class is waiting. Okay, good. That's good, Setu. Shardali, good. I mean, you can always do better. Okay. See, uh, 11 turns is all of a game of speed, accuracy, okay? Intelligence is definitely something which is required, but as you practice, as you solve more and more questions, you work on your accuracy and speed. That is more important. Okay. Anyways, so coming to uh, the uh, pattern that we were talking about, the pattern is more or less obvious when it comes to these expressions, which I have shown with a yellow underline. But what about these numbers? What about these numbers? How are they obtained? Okay. Now, long, long ago, there was a French mathematician, Blaise Pascal. Okay. Blaise Pascal. I mean, I mean in, in our Indian curriculum, we call him Pascal. <laughs> so, Pascal, see, many times I also, you know, call him Pascal only. <laughs> Ayyo, that's what happens. You have to check the paper, no, say too. Okay. So, long, long ago, there was a mathematician by the name of Blaise Pascal or Pascal, <laughs> he came up with a very interesting, you know, uh, triangle. Okay. And the triangle was something like this. So this triangle was made by a very interesting, you know, you can say mechanism. Okay. So it starts with a one and ends with a one. Okay. So every row, let's say I call this as the zeroth row. Okay, but there's, there's the reason why I'm calling it as a zeroth row, not the first row. So all the rows that we are seeing over here, they are all starting and ending with a one. Okay. Of course, except the zeroth row. And every intermediate numbers are actually obtained by adding the top two. Okay. This we have already seen before. Okay. So when you add these, this is what you are getting. So add one and three, you get a four. Add three and three, you get a six. Add three and one, you get a four, etc add this, you get this, add these two, you get this, add these two, you get this. Okay. So like that, this triangle can be, you know, this triangle goes on for ever and ever. Okay. Now this guy, Blaise Pascal, he, he found this in you know, somewhere in 16th century. And uh, later on, he moved into uh, the field of, he became very religious. Okay. He gave up everything and he went into the service of God. Okay. <laughs> Not like he you know, gave up on his research work and you know uh, findings in mathematics and he started doing bhajan kirtan okay not a bad thing to do but uh, later on his work was seen by newton okay sir isaac newton near about 17th century and he realized that these numbers that uh, blaise pascal had left off they actually find their place in these numbers okay and he was the one who actually came up with the theorem so sir isaac newton was the one who invented binomial theorem 
and he realized from the pascal triangle that these numbers that are written they are coming from this listing in the pascal triangle so this one that you see is actually this one okay and why did i call it as the zero throw because it, the power here is zero that's why i call it as zero throw okay the second one 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 you can see this is your one one okay the third one one two one one two one okay then one three three one see one three three one so thanks to this pascal triangle that now we will be able to fill up the other rows as well so this will become let me check what was it One four six four one. So this will become one four six four one. One four six four one. Okay. Similarly, for x plus a to the power five, I can use one five ten ten five one. So let me write that down. One five ten ten five one. Okay. And very surprisingly, these numbers that you see here. Okay, these numbers that you see here in the Pascal's triangle, they are called the binomial coefficient. Okay, so these numbers one, 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 two, one, etc. They are actually named as the binomial coefficient because, for the simple reason that they are coefficients of these expressions, isn't it? So many a times people ask me, sir, why do we call these numbers in the Pascal triangle as a binomial coefficient? because these numbers basically serve as these numbers in the binomial expansion okay and they are even more surprised when i when i used to call ncr as a binomial coefficient okay so fine these numbers are seen in the binomial expansion that is why you are calling them as binomial coefficient right but why are you calling ncr as a binomial coefficient is many people ask me why don't you just call it as n choose r see the reason is very simple these numbers that you see is actually your 0 c 0 1 c 0 1 c 1 2 c 0 2 c 1 2 c 2 3 c 0 3 c 1 3 c 2 3 c 3 etc so each of these listing in that pascal triangle is actually an ncr term is actually an ncr term a letter so isaac newton actually made a sense out of it why it is why ncr is appearing as a coefficient of this expansion right which i'll discuss in some time not to worry so meanwhile meanwhile you can actually write these numbers as 5c0 5c1 5c2 5c3 etc right so in light of this observation that you have you can actually make a formula out of it so he came up with a formula sir isaac newton came up with a formula so he generalized it and he realized that if i am expanding a binomial expression having a whole number index i could write it like this nc0 x to the power n a to the power 0 nc1 x to the power n minus 1 a to the power 1 nc2 x to the power n minus 2 a square da 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 da, da till ncn okay I found oh, this yeah. on the web for LC two. The moment it flashed, I came to know it got activated. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? In short, he figured out that you can write this term as summation n c r x to the power n minus r a to the power r r going from zero to n. So this particular expression that you see on your screen. this is what he called as the or what we study as a binomial theorem for whole number index please note this down okay and trust me this result was only derived from observation nothing else there was no i mean of course you can prove it by using mathematical induction but there was no derivation done to get it right you are just observing and then you realize that oh this is how this this particular expansions work right so this theorem came from our observation however i'll also show you a logical way to get to this expression in our next slide but before that copy this down
Okay. So now another way to look at it is another perspective. I would say another perspective. Okay. So if you see x plus a to the power of n, if n is a whole number, you can write it like x plus a, x plus a, x plus a like this. Okay, x plus a times x plus a times x plus a. Okay, n number of times. Okay, n number of times. Now Newton, how did he read it? He read it as he read it like this: x or a. So he read he read plus as or, and multiplication as and. Okay, so he read it as x or a, and x or a, and x or a, and x or a like that. Okay, now when you multiply it, basically it'll give you some terms, correct? And now he said that every term that you will be getting will contain one of x or a from every factor. Okay, but not both. Okay, so either you can choose x from here or a from here, but not both. And every factor must contribute either an x or an a. Now, another easy way to understand this is think as if there is a country, okay, which has got n families. Okay, so this is a family, this is a family, this is a family, this is a family. So there are n families living in a country. Okay, every family has a husband and wife. So x is a husband, a is a wife. Okay. Husband, wife, husband, wife, husband, wife, husband. Okay. Now let us say this country wants to go for a war. Okay. So the government of this country gives a mandate or passes a an order that every family must contribute only one person so that other person survives. Okay. So in how many ways can this army be prepared? So one way of preparing this army is you take all the excess from these families. So take all the husbands, correct? So that is one way of making an army, correct? So every family has contributed, and every family has contributed the husband of the family, correct? Another way to make that army is you take the husbands from n minus one families and take the wife from one family, correct? That is also going to make you know n member, and that is also going to make an army of n people, correct? So you take n minus one husbands and one wife. That is another way to make it, but that one wife can can come from any of these n families. So to choose that, you can have n c one way. So n c one way to choose the wife, and the remaining ones will automatically contribute the husbands, isn't it? So like that, you can also have an army having two wives and n minus two husbands. Da 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 da, and finally you can have. I mean, I'm just. Finally, you can have a, a, a army of all the women or all the wives, correct? So this itself, you can generalize it as n c zero like this, da 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 da, n c n like this. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? So this is another way of looking at the whole scenario. All right. So whether this perspective or the perspective that you got from your uh, pattern observation. Few things are very very clear, which I'll be taking up now in our analysis. So give me ten minutes, then I will give you a break. So let me just finish off this analysis. The first thing that you would have observed that in your x plus a to the power n, where n is a whole number, the total number of terms, the total number of terms. Now, by the way, when I say total number of terms, I actually mean total number of dissimilar terms. Now, why I did not use the word dissimilar? I know just when I said it for the first time, I just said total number of terms. I didn't use the word total number of dissimilar terms. Is because if you have x plus a and x and a both are dissimilar to each other, both are dissimilar type of terms. What is the meaning of dissimilar? Not of the same nature. For example, one is a constant, other is a variable, or one is a variable of one type, another is a variable of another type, like that, right? So if you are having dissimilar terms. Then on your expansion also you will end up getting all terms just similar, okay? If you have both the terms similar, you will only get one term, isn't it? For example, if I say two plus three to the power five, you get only one answer, right? Five to the power five. <laughs> so that's the reason why I am saying these two terms are dissimilar. Then only whatever I am saying will make sense. So total number of dissimilar terms, 
when you are expanding x plus a to the power n is n plus one. Okay. Now this can also be obtained by a permutation combination concept, which is basically nothing but the number of ways to distribute n identical objects, n identical objects between two distinct groups. As I told you when I was discussing the uh, pattern that the index gets distributed between X and A. It's like, you know, you're distributing N chocolates between two people. Okay. So this is something which is very important and I'll be talking about it again when we do multinomial theorem. Okay. So first just note this down, total number of dissimilar terms when you expand X plus A to the power N, when your X and A both are dissimilar to each other. So these two are dissimilar. Okay. Is going to be n plus one. Is going to be n plus one. Is this fine? Any questions? Second thing I would like you to note down is your expression for the general term. Now, general term normally we prefer writing it as t r plus one th term, where r could be any number from zero up till n. So, as you know, if you want to express the first term your R will be kept like a zero. That means you'll get T zero plus one, which is your first term. Okay. If you want to get the fifth term, R should be kept as four. If you want to get the last term, which is your N plus one -th term, R will be kept as N. Okay. So if you see the pattern, then you would realize that your R plus one -th term can actually be written like this. Okay. And you can check. See, if you want your first term, First term is n c zero c zero. I'm putting a stress on zero. N c zero x to the power n minus zero a to the power zero. Right, that is what has been obtained here. If you want third term n c two, isn't it? This is your third term. No, this is your third term. So n c two x to the power n minus two a to the power two. So that is why this. Okay. Now, many people say, sir, this is not fair. Why didn't you write TR? Why TR plus one? You could have written TR, isn't it? Why did you write TR plus one? See, if you write TR, you will end up writing something very, very ugly looking, something like this. Oh, sorry, A, not X, A. Now tell me which is more easy to remember and which is more easy to write. Is this one easy to write or this one? First one or the second one? Obviously the first one. No? Second one looks so ugly, right? This looks so complicated. So this is more convenient to write. Okay. This is not convenient, not convenient. And that's the reason why when we write our general term, we actually write TR plus one term, even though it sounds very you know weird. Because people will say, sir, in AP, GP, HP, you used to write TR only. Why all of a sudden in binomial theorem, you started writing TR plus one? Because for the simple reason that TR plus one is easier to write as compared to TR. Yes, the only painful thing over here is whatever position you want, your R has to be one less than that position. So if you want the 70th term, you have to keep your R as 69. If you want your no, 100th term, you have to keep your R as 99. That is the only pain point here. Okay. So this is not preferred. This guy is not preferred. Not preferred. And this is preferred. This guy is preferred. Okay. So going forward, when I write down the general term, I will use this expression for my general term. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Now, third thing that we are going to discuss is your middle term middle term or terms depends upon the situation. Now, frankly speaking, this is a convention. Okay. Now it is convention that when you are expanding X plus A to the power N, this is considered to be your first term. Why did I write I over there? I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. This is considered to be your first term by convention. This is second term. This is third term. This is your last term. Okay. So this is by convention that we follow. See, I mean, you have already done, let's say 
you know x plus a the whole square if i write if i ask five different people to expand it one person will say x square plus a square plus 2ax one person will say a square plus x square plus 2ax one person will say x square plus 2ax plus a square five different people will give me five different ways to write it isn't it so is there any first term here second term here third term here is something like this sacrosanct no it is something that we have made as a convention that if there is an x and an a as the first term and the second term respectively then this will be considered to be your first term let me just write it properly this will be your first term this will be your second term and this will be your third term this is how we conventionally write it okay so in light of this this actually becomes your middle term then hey right. are you getting mama so logically speaking there is nothing like first term second term third term it is not a sequence right so <laughs> this is something that might arise in your mind right? who who gives the authority to call that as a first term there is no such authority just by convention if you raise the entire power on the first term that is your first term and if you raise your entire power on the last term second term that is your last term and in between if the transition is happening those are given corresponding numbers okay so this is your first term second term third term okay so in light of this convention i am discussing this part with you so when you have x plus a to the power of n the middle term actually depends on your n value okay so there are two things that you will be talking here if n is even you tell me if n is even which term will be the middle term or terms so first of all how many middle terms will you have and what will be the position of those terms okay let's talk about n as even first you can take some example let's say x plus a whole square you just now did Uh, but by the way i am not going to write that expansion now so you realize that t2 is your middle term right if you raise it to a power 4 you will realize t3 is your middle term correct if you raise it to the power 6 i am not going to write them down i'm just writing t1 t2 t3 t4 just to tell you which term is the middle term then t4 will be the middle term so how is this position all of you tell me how is this position linked to this number how is this 3 linked to this 4 how is this 4 linked to this 6 can anybody tell me that right uh, siddharth there will be only one middle term that is for sure very obvious from here but what is the position of that middle term is what i am interested in there is one middle term okay of course but what is the position of that middle term is there any formula which you can use to link n value with the position ha eh? does it work like that setu 2 into 6 minus 2 is right nikhil so n by 2 plus 1th term will be your middle term okay please note that n by 2 plus 1th term will be your middle term see here 2 by 2 plus 1 gives you 2 4 by 2 Plus one gives you three. Six by two plus one gives you four. Okay. Very nice, right? So this is your position of the middle term. So what is the value of that middle term? You'll say, sir, I already know this is my r value. So n c r x to the power n minus r a to the power r. So this is your position. Okay. And later on, we'll prove that this this binomial coefficient is the greatest. So please note that. the middle term has the greatest binomial coefficient i've used the word binomial coefficient we will talk about that also in some time okay so remember when n is even there will be one middle term whose position will be n by 2 plus 1th term and that particular middle term is going to have the greatest of all binomial coefficients occurring in that expansion Okay, so out of n c zero, n c one, n c two, da 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 till n c n, if n is even, then n c n by two will be the greatest value. Now, why? We will prove this. We will prove this maybe in today's session. Let's see whether we reach to that extent. But if n is odd, if n is odd, 
then there will be two middle terms. Why? Because if you are raising it to an even, uh, sorry, odd power, let's say I, I take odd, okay, one. So there are two middle terms. Both of them are middle terms only. Okay. By the way, I will let, write it as T1 plus T2. Okay. So these two are middle terms. If you raise it to the power of three, then you have this. These two are middle terms. Okay. Yes or no? Raise it to a power of five. Yeah, these two are middle terms. Okay. So can you relate these numbers that I'm showing with a circle? Can you relate these numbers with this index, with this white circle? Any, any relation between them? So it is obvious that there are two middle terms, no doubt about it. No, no uh, debating about that. But how is that position of those middle terms linked to N? Can somebody tell me that? If you want, you can write few more terms and check it out. Nikhil again, once again, very good Nikhil. So here you will have two middle terms. Okay. We had one middle in case of even, but we'll have two middle terms in case of odd. And what will be those terms? As you rightly said, Nikhil, it will be Tn plus one by twoth term and Tn plus three by twoth term. Okay. Right. Prishim also is correct. So now if you have to write the value of that term, I'll better use my general term expansion. So I'll have to write it like this. How many people say, sir, why did you write it like this? Because remember we had learned TR plus one. So some R plus one I have to generate. So if you want to write this as an R plus one, R will be N minus one by two, obviously. So this will be N C N minus one by two X to the power N plus one by two A to the power N minus one by two. And the other guy, you can write it as T N plus one by two plus one, which is nothing but N C N plus one by two <coughs> X to the power N minus one by two A to the power N plus one by two. Okay. And just like we had it for our even terms, please note n c n minus one by two and n c n plus one by two they would be both equal and not only that they would be the greatest of all the binomial coefficients occurring in that series okay and this also i will prove officially little later uh you know, down the discussion okay is it fine right so these three of course we'll have many more things to be you know taken up in our problem solving so these three things you should keep in mind. One is how many terms are there, which is very obvious n plus one. And second thing is what is the expression for the general term? This is what we follow. We normally do not follow this. So I will just score it off. Okay. Just to show you that we don't follow this. And finally, we discussed about what are the, you know, what is the middle term or middle terms, depending upon your n value. If n is even only one middle term, and if n is odd, there will be two middle terms. And these are your positions n by two plus one, if n is even, and n plus one by two and n plus three by two when n is odd. Okay. This is something which I'll segregate over here. Fine. All right. So time for a quick Kit Kat break. So 6.17 is what is the time right now. We'll meet at 6.32 PM. Okay. On the other side of the break, we will see some problems based on whatever we have done so far. Okay. See you on the other side of the break. So let's start with some basic questions on whatever we have covered so far. Okay, let me begin with this question. Uh, expand this by binomial theorem. Okay, now it's a very simple question, but I just wanted to see whether everybody has understood that basic theorem that we had discussed in the initial part of our class. Now don't simplify any term, just write them down. So open your notebook and just write down the six terms. Why six terms? Because the power here or exponent here is five, right? So write down the six terms that you get from the expansion of this term. Okay. 
no need to expand anything just to give you a hands on practice and let me know once you're done so that we can immediately discuss it out <clears throat> just a simple done on the chat box is sufficient enough Is it done? Good. Now, please check your answer. The terms would be 5C0 to A to the power of 5 minus 3 by B to the power 0. 5c1 to a to the power 4 minus 3b to the power 1. 5c2 to a to the power 3 minus 3 by b to the power 2. 5c3 to a to the power of 2 minus 3 by b to the power of 3. 5c4 to a to the power of 1 minus 3 by b to the power of 4. And uh, last is 5c5 to a to the power 0 negative 3 by b to the power of 5. So one important thing that came out from this exercise is that this sign that you see over here, minus sign, it is actually considered to be a part of the second term. So this term should not be just treated like 3 by B. It should be treated with a minus sign. That is why if you see in all these expansions, I have written minus 3 by B as the second term. Okay. This is a mistake which many people do initially. Of course, not in the long term. They not do this mistake. But initially, people forget to include this sign. So how many of you actually forgot to include that sign? Okay. Now, from here, you realize that the terms will be alternately positive, negative. As you can see, this will be a positive term. Second will be a negative. Third will be positive. Fourth will be negative. So this leads to an alternative positive negative term. Alternative positive negative. I mean, I would say there's an alternative positive negative sign in between. I should not say positive negative term, but there are alternatively positive negative signs in between. Okay. So whenever you realize that there's an alteration of sign positive negative, it definitely implies that in the binomial expression, there must be a negative in between. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Okay. So we'll now see a very you know, advanced version of this type. Okay, let's take this question. Find the sum of the series. Summation from 0 to n minus 1 to the power r n c r half to the power r 3 to the power r 2 to the power 2 r 7 to the power r 2 to the power 3 r 15 to the power r, 2 to the power 4 r, up to m terms, up to m terms. It is just based on your understanding of the binomial theorem, nothing else, right? It is one of the basic questions or basic concepts it is based out of. Yes, yes, uh, Sharvili. This is NCR. If you want, I can write it in a proper way. This is NCR. Okay. Anybody has any idea? Okay. 
let's discuss it out. See, if you see see this term, uh, let me write this. Let, let me call this as, by the way, S M. I'll choose a green color here. S M. Yeah, S M because you are summing up till M terms, right? Now each of these terms of S M, I'm going to write it separately like this. Summation r equal to zero to n minus one to the power r n c r, and I'm going to separate this term. Okay. Second term likewise will be summation minus one to the power r. Okay. N c r r equal to zero to n. Second term is three to the power. R by two to the power two R. So the whole thing I can write it as three to the power. Uh, sorry, three by four to the power R. Correct? Do you all agree with me? Correct? Can this be written like this? Obviously. Next term. Likewise, I am going to write it like this: seven by eight to the power R. Correct? Right? Dot dot dot. So this goes all the way till M terms. Now. i would request everybody to have a deeper look into each one of these terms look at this term if you look at this term and if you start writing it if you start expanding it the first term will be nc0 half to the power 0 second term will be minus nc1 half to the power 1 third term will be nc2 half to the power 2 then minus nc3 half to the power 3 and this goes up till Minus one to the power n, n c n half to the power. N. Can you relate this to a binomial expansion? If yes, whose binomial expansion is this? Are you able to identify? No. Okay. Then let me add one more thing here. Let me put n one to the power n, one to the power n minus one, one to the power n minus two. Right, absolutely right, Nikhil. So this is actually one minus half raised to the power n. Do you all agree with me on that or not? Agreed. Likewise, can I say this term is nothing but one minus three by four to the power n? This term is one minus seven by eight to the power of n, and da 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 da. Okay. in short your series contains half to the power n 1 by 4 to the power n 1 by 8 to the power n 1 by 16 to the power n and so on up till n terms up till m terms correct agreed agreed or not agreed or not agreed okay so this is nothing but it's like a geometric series it's like a geometric series that means it is a sum of a geometric progression whose first term is 1 by 2 to the power n common ratio is also 1 by 2 to the power n check if you multiply this with 1 by 2 to the power n you get the second term if you multiply this with 1 by 2 to the power n you get the third term and total terms total number of terms is going to be m because there are m such terms so can you not apply geometric series formula to sum this up right so what is the geometric series formula for m terms tell me tell me tell me a to the power sorry a into r to the power total number of terms minus 1 by r minus 1 correct so in light of this i can write it as 1 by 2 to the power n common ratio is this Whole raised to the power m minus one. Okay, by this, on simplification, this will give you one minus two to the power m n divided by two to the power m n one minus two to the power n, which you can also state it like this. Both are same things. This is going to be your answer to this particular question. is it fine any questions any questions any concerns
okay so it was all about identification whether you are able to identify that oh each of these terms is actually a binomial expansion in itself so you are actually summing up binomial expansions right so each of these terms was actually a binomial expression in itself and you are finding the sum of those binomial expressions very good question okay all right let's move on to the similar type of questions in fact okay let's say okay let's take some question on middle terms yeah find the middle term in this expansion find the middle term in this expansion middle term or terms that depends upon the expression you can just say it done also no need to no need to actually write your response okay just say it done if you're done anybody great so here we know that n is odd number right so this is an odd number so we had already discussed that there will be two middle terms right so two middle terms will come out two middle terms will come out right what will be those two middle terms as we already discussed t n plus 1 by 2 and t n plus 3 by 2 okay which is nothing but t 5 and t 6 now how do you find t 5 t 5 is i think nothing but t 4 plus 1 see always while you are finding out the general term you should always write it as r plus 1 so if this t5 your r will become automatically 4 so this will be your r okay so now use the formula n c r first term to the power n minus r which is this second term by the way second term will include the negative sign within it don't exclude the negative sign okay so in short will become 9 c 4 3 x to the power 5 minus x cube by 6 to the power 4 similarly this will become t5 plus 1 which is nothing but 9c5 3x to the power 4 and minus x cube by 6 to the power of 5 now don't need to expand it but these two will be your middle terms answer okay don't don't waste time simplifying it it's fine even if you leave it till here is it fine and you can check yourself that nc5 and nc4 will be equal and they will be the greatest of all binomial coefficients acha there is something which i would like to address over here what is the difference between what is the difference between term binomial coefficient and coefficient okay let's try to understand this okay let me take a simple example if somebody says 2 plus 3x. Okay, expand this. 2 plus 3x square. Let's expand this. So if you use our binomial expression uh, expansion, we'll end up getting something like this. Okay, I've just taken a simplistic case so that we don't waste too much time. Okay, now let's say if I ask you what is the second term, this whole thing will be your second term. okay so this whole thing that is 2 to the power 1 3 to the power 1 x this whole term will be your second term getting the point just keep getting the point 
Just give me a second. I think the screen would have got unshared. Just give me a second. Yeah. When power goes off, normally the screen gets unshared. Yeah. Now, what is the binomial coefficient? Binomial coefficient of, let's say, second term is your this part. This is your binomial coefficient. Only the 2c1, that is the binomial coefficient. Okay, so normally they will say, what is the binomial coefficient of fifth term, third term, sixth term, whatever, whatever term. There you just have to mention the NCR, which is sitting in that term. Got it? If somebody says, what is the coefficient? Now, normally the word coefficient is something which is, the word coefficient means something which is sitting along with something, right? So we say coefficient of some expression, like coefficient of x, coefficient of x square. Okay. So if the word coefficient of something is not mentioned, only coefficient is mentioned, then don't get panic. It automatically means coefficient of the variable. Okay. Whatever is the variable involved, the number associated along with that variable is your coefficient of that variable. So in our case, if they say coefficient, or coefficient of x that will comprise 2c1, 2 to the power 1, 3 to the power 1. So this whole thing will be coefficient. Are you getting my point? So it's very important to distinguish between at least the last two which I have written. Term is obvious. Many people don't get confused in the term. But what is the difference between binomial coefficient and coefficient should be very clear. Now, I'm not stating that coefficient cannot be binomial coefficient. So if, if let's say if there was no constant involved other than the binomial coefficient, then that itself will be your coefficient. Okay. So your binomial coefficient can also be your coefficient provided that there is no other constant involved with it. Here you have a two and a three also no sitting here, right? So your coefficient is different from your binomial coefficient, but let's say if you had only one plus X to the power of two, okay, then in this case, just give me a second. Some children are screaming like. Yeah. Yes, if you have something like this, then you'll only get one, uh, two C zero, one to the power two, X to the power zero, two C one. In fact, we don't write it actually like one to the power two. Right? So two C one X, then you'll have two C two X square. So if you, somebody asks you, what is the binomial coefficient in the second term? So this is a term number two. So here your binomial coefficient will be two C one, and that will be also your coefficient. That means coefficient of the variable. Variable here is your x. Okay. So I'm not trying to say that binomial coefficient and coefficient will always be different. There will be occasions when your coefficient itself is your binomial coefficient. So that will depend on question to question. Okay. So this is very important. Don't make a mistake about it. Okay. So are you clear about uh, the difference between what is the difference between these three terms? I hope nobody is going to make mistake based on these simple concepts. Okay. See why I'm telling you this is because in your past, your seniors have made mistakes. Okay. They say, Oh, sir, they were asking coefficient. I found out binomial coefficient gone, right? Four marks gone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so now let's take some problem based on uh, general term. So let's start with this simple question. Find the seventh term in this expansion. Now, again, as I told you, by convention, we call, okay, some, I mean, starting with 4x as the first term and minus 2 by root x as the second term, whatever we get, the first term is that 13c0, 4x to the power 13 minus half root x to the power 0. That will be your first term. And accordingly, when you keep writing it, they are called second term, third term, fourth term, and so on. Okay, that is by convention that we follow like that. Anyways, so what is the seventh term of this particular expansion? Just say a done on the chat box if you're done. No need to give me a response. I don't want anybody to sit, sit and type that out.
डन वेरी गुड ओके सो दिस इज जस्ट बेस्ड ऑन योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दी जनरल फॉर्मुला सो टी आर प्लस वन वी ऑलरेडी नो इट्स एन सी आर द फर्स्ट टर्म रेस टू दी पार एन माइनस आर सेकेंड टर्म second term means second of that expression raised to the power r right so here just understand that t7 means t6 plus 1 okay so as per your formula which you have written over here it will be 13 c6 that first expression is 4x n minus r is 7 second expression is minus 1 by 2 root x raised to the power of 6 okay and again it is up to you to simplify it but i'll just do a basic simplification um if i am not mistaken this is 2 to the power 14 and you have 2 to the power 6 here this is x to the power 7 this is x to the power 3 so this will boil down to 13 c6 uh 2 to the power 8 x to the power 4 so this will be your seventh term of that expansion fine any questions easy so these are all basic questions which i am taking up on the topic should we move on to the next one Okay, let's take this one. Find the fourth term from the end. Find the fourth term from the end of this expansion. Again, write a done if you're done. No need to type out your response. excellent how many of you have done it now see when you are finding the fourth term especially from the end this is very very important many people what they do they literally start counting from the end actually don't need to do that when somebody says fourth from the end you just reverse the position of the first and the second expressions okay and find from here from here you just find out your fourth term the usual way of finding the and it's uh, r plus 1 at term right so you don't have to back count it right just reverse the position of the first and the second expression right and just find out your normal r plus 1 at term like we like we how we learned it in our analysis so t4 will be t3 plus 1 so it will be 7c3 minus 2 by x square to the power of 4 x cube by 2 to the power of 3 now very important to note here is that the minus sign is actually shifted along with the term okay as you can see i have just not swapped the position around the minus sign this minus sign is actually considered to be the part of the second term so it is read like this getting my point so when you are you know uh, swapping their positions the minus sign will be accompanying that 2 by x square everywhere getting my point of course again if you simplify it if i am not mistaken this will give you 7c3 2 and 2x which is actually 70x is this what you people are getting those who said done 70x is it fine okay 
let's take few questions based on finding the coefficients of a certain power of x okay so let's take this question find the coefficient of x to the power 8 in the expansion of this term Okay, now in this type of a question, you don't have to actually write all the terms and you should not be actually doing it because writing all the terms means writing 11 terms. And then you are scanning each of these 11 terms to see which term is generating x to the power 8. I would not suggest you to take that approach because that is going to be too, too lengthy. Okay. And in an examination scenario, you are not going to get that liberty to spend that much of time. And imagine what will be the fight if their power was, if the, uh, if that uh, index was more than 10, let's say it was like 50 or something. Okay. Will you sit and write all the terms? Okay. So here the approach is, we assume that let R plus one -th term contain X to the power eight. Okay. So I don't know which term is going to give you X to the power eight finally, but I'm just taking a guess or just taking an assumption in initially that let R plus one -th term is the one where x to the power 8 actually appears. So as per our expansion of the general term, this will be 10 C R this to the power 10 minus R minus 1 x to the power R, right? So here separate out the uh, constants from each other and separate out powers of x. Okay. I hope everybody has understood till this extent. So 10 C R. Okay. I've kept it separate minus one to the power r will come from here that i have kept it separate and if you consolidate your powers of x's using your exponent laws you end up getting x to the power 20 minus oh, oh, 2r nobody 20 minus 2r minus r coming from this last term now if you want that this term should contain x to the power 8 which means this term should be 8 that means 20 minus r uh, 20 minus 3r should be your 8 which means 3r is equal to 12. That means your r value is equal to 4. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, they're asking you for the coefficient. Thank you. Yeah. They're asking you for the coefficient. So coefficient is this guy. Please note that everything along with the variable that is called coefficient everything which is sitting along with it i mean sitting with it okay that is called the coefficient so your coefficient is 10 c r minus 1 to the power r r is 4 here and this answer is 210 okay 10 c 4 is 210 i hope everybody remembers that value now one important thing to note over here if your R doesn't come out to be a whole number, it actually means that the particular power of X that you are looking for does not appear in the expansion. Okay. So let's say while solving it here, we were lucky to get a whole number, but let's say you got 4.5 or let's say you got a minus minus two. It just indicates that that particular power of X is not there in that expansion. Okay. For such case, you will write the coefficient to be zero. So please note this down. Okay. You will not say coefficient does not exist. You will say coefficient is zero. So if a certain term does not appear, we, we basically take its coefficient to be zero. Okay. 
there was one question i think uh, it was asked in one of the regional entrance exams where they gave this option as coefficient does not exist coefficient is zero and most of the people went for coefficient does not exist no <laughs> if some term is not there its coefficient is zero that's why the term is not there is it fine any questions any concerns is this approach understood by everybody okay so now we'll take a similar question mm, let's take this one find the term independent of x find the term independent of x independent of x means it will just be a constant there will be no x there okay so it will be a straight forward constant value okay so which term in this expansion will be just a constant is what the question is asking you and again no need to type your response just say a done that is more than enough for me okay tejasvini can tejasvini you can also give me the value can you give me the value as well if at all i mean it's not too big to write see you don't have calculators in your exam i hope everybody is aware of it neither in your cbsc exam nor in your competitive exams okay so you if the number is too big you can leave it like that okay and if you can find it out by using your you know normal calculations please find the value as well in case you are able to find out the value if it is not too big for you to find it out please find it out okay prishim is also done prishim i hope you have not just stopped at finding the position you have you should also find out its value if at all it is uh you know calculatable okay should we discuss it so just like the previous question will say let r plus 1 a term be independent of x okay so let's say this is independent of x in the same way that we used in the previous problem we will write down the r plus 1 a term in this case it will be 9 cr 3 by 2 x square to the power of 9 minus r minus 1 by 3 x to the power of r okay let's consolidate let's consolidate all the constants together okay so that is the first thing i'll do and then we'll consolidate all the powers of x if i'm not mistaken these will be all powers of x correct me if i'm wrong yeah okay now you are claiming that it is independent of x independent of x means the co the the uh, index or the exponent or the power should be zero which means 18 minus 3r is 0 that means r is 6 thankfully it's a whole number that means there is a term okay there is a term which is independent of x so what is that term let's find it out so the term independent of x is your seventh term and that term is 9c6 3 by 2 to the power of 3 so let me write it like this okay minus 
by 3 to the power of 6. If that's just 3 to the power 6. Okay. 9 C6 is 9 into 8 into 7 by, 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 3 factorial, which is 6 into, 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 into. Why, why did I write a 3 here? It should be 6, no? 6, 6. Yes. So this will be 3 to the power 3, which is 27. And uh, we'll also have an 8. Correct. So 8, 8 gone. 7 by 18. 7 by 18, dear students. Is this what you are getting? Tell me. 7 by 18. Those who said yes or those who said done, 7 by 18. Is this what you are getting? Okay. All right. So with this, we'll now move on to another type of question. In fact, a very interesting one. Before that, if you want to ask me something or copy something down from here, please do so. Okay, so let's move on to this question. Mm, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Find the number of irrational terms in this expansion. Find the number of irrational terms in this expansion. So as you can see, the power is 100. Okay, so when you expand it, you'll get almost almost what exactly 101 terms. So out of those 101 terms, how many terms do you think are actually irrational in nature? Now, this is what the competitive exams want you to, you know, solve the previous ones were all, you know, basic copybook questions. So these were the ones, these are the ones where you have to think of it. So let me give you some time. Once you get the answer, please give it, give your response on the chat box. Yes. Any idea how to do this? Just a minute. Okay. Sure. Sure. Nikhil, I'll give you some, give you some time. One minute, one and a half minutes, whatever is necessary. Take it. No issues. This is 5 to the power 1 8th, 2 to the power 1 6th to the power of 100. So they're asking you how many of these expressions will be, or how many terms of this expansion will be thirds. Excellent. Very good, Nikhil. Awesome. So Nikhil has solved this question. Very good. Anybody else? Okay, never mind. Let's let's focus on any general term. Okay, so if you take any general term of this expression, you will have something like this. Okay, Siddharth, Karthik, good try, but unfortunately, that's not the right answer. We'll check it out. Okay, 
So if you write it down like this, you have something like this coming up. Okay. Correct. Now let us focus on what will make this term rational first of all. Let's say if I want this to be rational. Okay. What can you comment about these powers that you have on two and five? Let me hear it out from you. Should they be, I mean, any value or there should be some specific values assigned to them. Let's say, can I have this as two by three or can I have this as let's say five by eight, something like that. If you want the entire term to be rational, Q, Q means rational. What can you comment about these two expressions? Can I say they should be integers? Any integer, positive, negative, whatever. It should be integer, right? Because if that term is not an integer, there would be a third hidden. And let me tell you, because this two and five are, you know, relatively prime, that means they will not have even some common factors to make that two third as a rational number. Okay. So two and five being relatively prime to each other, they will not have any kind of a common third between them to make them to you know, basically remove that third thing from there. For example, let's say both of them contributes root two root two. So root two root two may become two, which is a rational number, but even that is not going to happen. So the only way that you are going to ensure that this term remains a rational number is by ensuring the powers of five and two remain integers, right? So now we have to figure out that how many R's exist between zero to hundred. Please note that your R can go from zero to hundred for which both of them are integers. Okay. So this also is an integer and this also is an integer. How many such R exist? Okay. Now let us figure out the second, let's focus on our second expression. So between zero to hundred, you can have the following R's for which R by six is an integer da, 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 till 96. Okay. Now, which out of them is also making hundred minus R by eight as an integer. Let's figure that out. So what I've done first, I figured out when is this integer first. And then for those values of R, which will make R by six integer, I'm trying to again, select which one is making this guy also as an integer. So finally, whichever satisfies hundred minus R by eight as an integer from these values, they will only be taken in our consideration. Okay. So let's start with zero hundred minus zero by eight. No, not an integer six 94 by eight, not an integer 12 88 by eight. Yes. It's an integer. So 12 is fine. Okay. 18. No 72 by eight. Uh, sorry. Uh, 82 by eight is not an integer. Right? 24, no, 76 by it is not an integer. Then the next number would have been, I think, uh, 24, uh, 24 is over. Uh, yeah, 24 is over. Next number will be, uh, you let me write it down. 24, 30, 36, 30, 30, no, not an integer. 36, yes, 36 will give me an integer because 36 will make the numerator as 64. Okay. So let me just write it down slightly more. Okay. By the way, I will not write all of them. There's a pattern by which you can actually identify. Now the next uh, number that you will get will be at a gap of 24. Okay. So next number that you will be putting is 60. So hundred minus 60, that is also going to be okay. Next will be 84 hundred minus 84 is 16, 16 by it is an integer. Okay. So these are the only four numbers that only four value of R's for which you will end up getting this quantity as a rational number. So that means only T 13, T 37, T 61 and T 85 are rational. Rest all are irrational. So how many will be irrational, which means 101 minus four because only four of them are rational. So 97 
irrational terms will be there is it fine this is the type of question that you are expected to deal with in your competitive exams is it fine any questions you have in the solution of this particular problem please definitely ask <clears throat> okay any questions nobody all happy with the solutions okay fine so let's take a similar one a very similar one so exactly the same approach has to be used in the next question which i am going to give you so if you have done with the copying part i am going to the next slide okay let's take this question yeah find the sum of all rational terms in this expansion find the sum of all rational terms in this expansion this question i am expecting most of you to get the answer okay i should be seeing my chat box flooded with answers exactly the same approach only difference is they are asking you for sum of all the rational terms so whatever rational terms you get they have to you have to add them <clears throat> yeah anybody Are you? I thought people will be done by now. Okay, I can give one more minute. Okay, Tejaswini. Sum of all rational terms in this expansion. So whatever rational terms you're getting, you have to add them and get me the give me the sum.
Okay. See, let's let's again write down the R plus one -inch term. R plus one -inch term is fifteen CR, three to the power one fifth to the power of fifteen minus R, and two to the power one third to the power of R, which means nothing but fifteen CR, three to the power fifteen minus R by five, two to the power of R by three. Oh, very good, Prisham. Very good. Excellent. Anybody else? Okay. Now again, if you want this guy to be rational, you must ensure that fifteen minus r by three is an integer, and so should be r by three. So both of these guys must be integer each, and your r can only go from zero to fifteen because your highest power is fifteen. The power here is fifteen, so r can start all the way from zero and go to fifteen. Okay. So between between zero to fifteen, how many whole numbers meet this criteria? That 15 minus r by 3 is also an integer, and r by 3 is also an integer. So first we'll focus out how many makes r by 3 as an integer. So 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Now out of this, how many will make this as an integer? Zero will it make it as an integer? Is 15 minus 0 by 3 integer? Yes. Okay. Is 3 making an integer? No. 3 will make 12 by. Uh, Sorry, this was five, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So zero is going to make an integer, but three is not going to make an in integer. Correct. Six also no nine by five, not an integer. Nine will give you six by five, not an integer. Twelve, three by five, not an integer. Fifteen zero, that is an integer. So these are the only two terms. these are the only two terms and this is actually your first term and the last term these are only rational these are only rational okay so let's find out t1 t1 will be nothing but 15 c0 uh, this whole thing to the power of 15 which will make it 3 to the power 3 which is nothing but 27 okay and t16 which is nothing but 15 c15 uh 2 to the power 5 so that is nothing but 32 so the sum of t1 and t16 is nothing but 27 plus 32 which happens to be 59 so those who said 59 and only one person said that prishim absolutely right so 59 is the sum of all the rational terms is it fine any question was it was this problem solved in a very different way Visibly the previous one? No, it was almost the same procedure involved. Hmm. Is it fine? So last five minutes, we'll take one question and we'll call it a day. By the way, this chapter is only thirty percent covered. Less seventy percent, I would try to cover up in our next class. So meanwhile, we'll take a small question to conclude the day. Okay, let's take this question. Okay, just a you know very interesting fact. So this fact has been stated that hundred and one to the power fifty will have more value than hundred to the power fifty plus ninety nine to the power fifty. I had a doubt in the previous one. Okay, let's go to the previous one. Say to have some doubt. Yes, say to tell me what is the doubt. Why can it be only be zero and fifteen? Because zero and fifteen are the only values which will make both of them as integers. Check करना no. zero पे फिफ्थ integer ये भी integer fifteen पे भी ये भी integer ये भी integer. Rest no other values will make both of them integers other than zero and fifteen. Six कहाँ बोला मैंने six तो नहीं होगा ना? Out of these Out of these only, these are the ones which meet the criteria. This only makes this guy as integer. So this is ruled out. This is ruled out. This is ruled out. This is ruled out. Only zero and fifty. Ah, the same thing I did in the previous question also, right? <laughs> okay. So this is a very interesting fact that even when you combine hundred to the power fifty and ninety nine to the power fifty, it is unable to beat hundred and one to the power fifty. Okay, can you prove this by using binomial theorem? Can this be proved using binomial theorem?
of course you can't sit and calculate their values because they're too big a numbers okay so without actually calculating their you know exact values how can you establish this inequality between them Okay, so in the interest of time, I'll be solving this problem because there's just two minutes left. I don't want it to extend beyond. Okay. Okay, we'll check this out. See, 101 to the power 50. Can I write it as 100 plus 1 to the power 50? Okay. And when you write this expansion, it becomes 100 to the power 50, 50 C1, 100 to the power 49, 50 C2, 100 to the power 48. Okay, da, 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 till the last term will be, I think, 50. Uh, let me write the penultimate term also 50C4900, and last is 50C50, which is one actually. Okay, now we also have a 99 to the power 50 also sitting. Can I write that as 100 minus 1 to the power 50? So basically, I'm trying to use 101 to the power 50, 99 to the power 50, and trying to write it in terms of 100 to the power 50. Okay. So in this case, you will realize that there would be an alternating plus positive negative signs. Okay, da, 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 da. this will be a minus 50C4900 and last will be again 50C50. 50C50, okay. Now, these two expressions, let us subtract them. Let us subtract these two expressions. So when you subtract them, you get 101 to the power 50 minus 99 to the power 50. And while subtracting, you realize that these terms will start canceling off. Okay. And you'll end up getting twice of 50 C1, 100 to the power 49. So only, the, uh, only these alternative terms is going to survive. Correct. Okay. I think the last term that is going to survive is uh, 49, sorry, 50C49 into 100. Okay. Now let us open this particular uh, bracket to a certain extent. So let me just multiply two with this guy. So two with this guy will give me, all of you see here, this is two, this is 50. So two into 50 into 10 to the power, for, uh, uh, into 100 to the power 49. Won't that become 100 to the power 50 itself? And other terms, I'm not going to disturb them. I'm just going to write as they are. Okay. No, there's no point writing them down. Okay. Now, per, my purpose is solved here itself. So here you realize that 101 to the power 50 minus 99 to the power 50 minus 100 to the power 50 is this fellow. Correct. And common sense says that this is a positive term. Correct. Which means 101 to the power 50 minus 99 to the power 50 minus 100 to the power 50 is positive term. Which means 101 to the power 50 is greater than 100 to the power 50 plus 99 to the power 50. So even when you combine the two, it is not able to supersede. It is not even able to equal to it. By the way, it is actually much more than that because as you can see, this term is going to be huge. <laughs> so 101 to the power 50 is much, 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 much more bigger than the combined sum of these two. Okay. Okay. So dear all, we are going to stop here. This chapter has just started, by the way. Next class, when we meet, we are going to talk about uh, the concept of numerically greatest term, numerically greatest coefficient. We are going to talk about applications of binomial theorem and of course, binomial coefficient series, binomial coefficient for any, any index. And finally, we're going to talk about multinomial theorem. So let's see how much we are able to conclude in our next session that we have. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
Take care, stay safe, and please get yourself vaccinated ASAP. Okay. Signing off. Good night. Thank you.